right. Well, happy Friday. It is Friday. We've survived another week. God willing, we'll survive another one after this. And I hope you had a good, productive week of work. Now, I wanted to do a video. You know, A.D. Robles has a variety of different kinds of content that he does. And some of it is getting all ranty. And sometimes he's trying to be funny. But, you know, old A.D., he's a helpful guy at heart. And he's a big softy as well. And, um, well, you know, I was thinking about about Big Eva. And by the way, if you don't know what Big Eva is, John Harris did a very interesting video about what Big Eva is this week. So check out Conversations That Matter on YouTube um, and type in what is Big Eva or something like that. It was a very good video. In any case, um, I was thinking about Big Eva and, you know, I rip them all the time. We have a good time laughing about their stupidity. And it's, that's really fun. You know, it's it's really fun to laugh at how stupid they are. I just found a podcast, like a very small podcast, that Russell Moore was on talking about Christian nationalism. When I say small, it's like on YouTube they got, you know, a couple hundred subscribers, so relatively small. And, um, you know, probably nobody listens to this podcast. And I was listening to it, and I just wanted to, like, gouge my eyes out. It was so boring, and I can't imagine anyone listening to this and being like, oh, wow, this is so helpful. But some people do. We have a good laugh at stuff like that, right? And it's a good time. Um, but there's a dark side to Big Eva as well. I was actually talking to my wife about this. And I started thinking about this. I mean, I've thought about it before, but I started thinking about it this past Sunday when I was at the ordination uh, service for a friend of mine, Reverend Grant Van Brimmer. And Grant um, is, he, he, he moved to Canada um, to be a pastor. And, um, and, you know, that didn't work out. And, and a big part of that, it's his story to tell, not mine, but a big part of that was essentially his unwillingness to sort of play ball with the Great Reset, essentially. And, I, you know, <clears throat> if he's going to tell that story at some point, I'll let him tell it. But that's essentially what it boils down to in, in, in common speak. You know, so that's one guy. And then there's another guy that I know who was also a pastor and he was on the, you know, he felt the call of God on his life and, and he was on a track to become an ordained minister as well. And he also likewise was pushed out of his church for his unwillingness to go along with the Great Reset. And um, in both of these cases, and I don't, I don't think I'm talking behind anyone's back here, in both of these cases, you know, Big Eva adjacent people um, were basically, you know, all over the Great Reset, you know, wanting him to go along and to get along, you know, putting all the same pressure <clears throat> that they put on everybody, where it's like, well, if you don't do, if you don't put a mask on, you're not loving your neighbor. We got to insist on the vaccine and all this, all the propaganda, right? And uh, th these men held their integrity. They said, no way, we're not doing that. You can't add, you know, stipulations to the worship of God. Like, you can't say that someone's an unbeliever because they don't want to wear a mask and they won't wear a mask. You can't say someone is not able to come to the table of Christ, you know, the, the, the Lord's table. You can't bar someone from the Lord's table because they're not vaccinated, you demon. They didn't say it like that because they're a lot nicer than I am, but that's kind of what how I feel about it right you're barring people from the Lord's table for nonsense reasons and so they weren't willing to go along they held their integrity but it would be a lie to say that the whole situation didn't affect them you know these these two men while they held their integrity they seriously have to consider and they they, they did and they still are to some degree you know is ministry for me maybe I don't have the call Maybe, maybe God hasn't called me to ministry. And, and I remember talking to Grant about this and, you know, my, he, he said what I said was helpful. I can't, I didn't, I didn't think I was that helpful. I, I basically just said, Hey man, you're not alone. This is happening all over the place. It's not, it is a big deal, but it's like, I would not consider this as like, Oh, maybe you're not called to ministry. Maybe you are, maybe you're not, but this whole situation, it doesn't have anything to do with that. And I think that's what I said, because I, because that's the truth. I mean, this is happening all over the place. You're not alone. This is just a thing that's happening, and Christians have to stand up for what's true, what's written in the Scripture. But the the reality is that this has discouraged two people that I know personally um, from, you know, it. It's like maybe I'm not called right. And Big Eva has that effect on people. Big Eva makes you doubt. 
uh, things that are so obvious about the scriptures. Big Eva makes you doubt what you know from the word of God. Big Eva makes you doubt your own salvation. If you don't go along with the propaganda, if you don't go along with the Great Reset, and guys, this is very, very dark, in my opinion. You know, Big Eva ministers out there, you know, they've got their guild, they've got their, their friends, and they'll defend them to the death, even in the face of obvious sin. Even in the face of obvious, you know, we're going to add things to the elements of worship, we're going to add laws to the law of God. And protect. It's a new Sanhedrin, guys. It's a new Sanhedrin, and they're out there, and they've got their schools, you know, I follow Gamaliel, and, you know, they've got, the, you know, I follow Chandler, and they've got their whole thing set up. They have a guild just like the Sanhedrin did. They've got a whole system just like the Sanhedrin did. They have extra laws that they pretend are the laws of God just like the Sanhedrin did. And this is the thing. I say this all the time on my channel. We, we mix it up in our minds because we read the scriptures through the criticisms of Jesus Christ that he had against the the Pharisees. So for us it's very easy to see that the Pharisees were the enemies in the in the story, but it wasn't easy for the people to see that at the time. The, the Pharisees were well spoken. They had smooth words. They probably had great tone. They probably had buttery smooth tone. You know how I know that because the word of God warns about people with those smooth buttery tones. They they were seen to have the Pharisees were seen to be the ones that loved God the most. They were always talking about God. They probably wrote poems about God. They were probably pretty good Christian hedonists, if you know what I mean. So the Pharisees had all that going for them. They, they had respect, right? And in fact, they even had respect in some degree from the pagans, right? Like, yeah, sure, the pagans probably weren't like all that thrilled about the Sanhedrin. But when they wanted to talk to the Jews, when they wanted to negotiate with the Jews, they went to the Sanhedrin. They, if, they had, if they had their own equivalent to like the New York Post or the Atlantic in Rome, they would have Sanhedrin guys write for the Atlantic. That's how it would work. And so... What we've got set up with Big Eva and the Gospel Coalition and all these guys that have this guild, and they fence that guild very, very carefully, what we've got is a new Sanhedrin in almost every way that you can imagine. My book is very aptly named Social Justice Pharisees, but it's not just about social justice. It's about the whole agenda, the whole thing. The Sanhedrin that we have today is essentially just like the Sanhedrin that we had uh, in, in, in Jesus' time. These are people that have a squeaky clean reputation, but on the inside and behind the scenes, they're vicious. And the trail of bodies behind them, good men, good men like my, my friend Grant Van Brimmer, like these are guys that have, that have held their integrity. The Sanhedrin is so powerful that they can even make a good man like that question whether or not he's cut out for ministry just through their bogus, fake, phony baloney systems that are centered on the traditions of men as opposed to the word of God. And listen, none of us are immune to this. None of us are immune to this because we all know in our personal lives people that greatly respect the modern Sanhedrin of Gospel Coalition. We all know people in our lives that when we say anything about, you know, maybe that teaching isn't quite right, I'm not so sure about that, they get, they get their holy robes on, they tear them. How dare you say that against the Lord's anointed? And it's like, you know, like, we've all seen this in action. We've got people in our lives, and it can go one of two ways, right? You can kick against that. You can fight against that, and that takes a certain kind of personality. Um, or you get put in your place, right? Because the Sanhedrin is very good at giving you that backhand. They're very good at that. And the thing is, when you don't fall into line after getting slapped in the face with the backhand— then they kick you out. Then they, they say that you're not even a Christian. I've got people in the Sanhedrin, the modern Sanhedrin, that have told me, A.D., you are like a tax collector to me. You're like a Gentile to me. Written down word for word. I could show you the receipts right now if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. This is how they, when you don't fall into line after they slap you, that's what happens. A lot of people do fall into line, though. They get that slap, and I've got stories, and we're going to reveal some of these stories. You know, obviously, I'm not going to gossip, but I'm going to tell you what people experience with the Sanhedrin. 
a lot of people just fall into line and they say, man, maybe I'm not even a Christian. Like I, I don't, I don't see it this way. And they slap me down. I'm just going to keep quiet now. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to obey. And it's like, this is what the Pharisees used to do. This is how they operated. They operated in public with the squeaky clean, buttery words. Oh, yo, just love, 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 love. And behind the scenes are vicious like a mafia. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. We know whose side that the Great Reset Passers, the Gospel Coalition guys, we know whose side they would have been on in Nazi Germany. We already know that. We don't need to know. We, need, we, we don't need to, to guess. We know what side they would have been on during slavery. We know what side they would have been on in Jesus' time because it's all the same spirit. They do what is expedient, what the public will will see as loving. They, they, they do that. They support that kind of stuff. What the public will see as loving, whether it's loving or not, doesn't matter. What the public will see as loving, that's what they'll promote because they love the praise of men just like the Pharisees did. Just like the Pharisees did. So this whole video is meant to encourage you because you are not crazy. The Sanhedrin might make you want to feel like you're crazy. They might want to make you feel like you're a worse sinner in the entire world. You're, you're totally wrong. You're completely pagan. You're a Gentile and a tax collector. I've heard stories, man, you would not believe the kinds of things that are said behind the scenes from the Sanhedrin, the modern Big Eva Sanhedrin. But you're not crazy. It is not okay to add things to the, to the elements of worship. It is not okay to bar the table from people who aren't properly vaccinated. That's not, that's not Christian in any way. That's completely pagan. It's just that simple. It's not okay to divide the church up like a pizza according to skin color. It's not okay to do those things. It's just, you're not crazy. Don't let these idiots gaslight you into thinking you're crazy. I, I, can't, I can only imagine like what, what the Pharisees would have done if like a regular person would have been like, yeah, but you know, this Corbin law, like that doesn't really seem to match what I know from the fifth commandment, like honor your father and mother. This actually seems to be the opposite. I, 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 I couldn't only imagine the kinds of things. Oh, look at that guy's tone. His tone. It's just, it, you could see that he's evil because look at his tone. He doesn't even know it. He didn't even go to seminary. This is this this is the, this is the tactics. Circle the wagons. All the I could see. I could see. Uh, you know. You know. Shlomo over here being like. You know. He he sees the controversy. He says, "Oh, Gamaliel. We support Gamaliel. He's a great man of God." And you know. You know the way that the way that the guild does it. You know where they circle the wagons. Anyway, but yeah. So this is meant to be encouraging, guys. Like, you you. It's it, it often is very simple. If somebody's telling you that you have to do something that the Bible does not say you have to do in order to take the Lord's Supper, you are not crazy. They're Pharisees. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So anyway, uh, I hope you found that video encouraging. If you're in Big Eva or you like are part of this guild or you desire to be part of this guild, this video has probably made you very mad. And if you feel anger, from my comparisons to the modern day Pharisees to, you know, the Sanhedrin of old, um, there's a very good chance that you're in the Sanhedrin. You're, or you're at least seeking to be in it. And you know, to you, I say it's time to repent. Stop worshiping men. Matt Chandler's not God. You know what I mean? Like, why would you treat his words as if they were God? Gospel Coalition is not a good organization. Gospel Coalition is a net negative, and it's not even close. Gospel Coalition needs to be over. I cannot wait to the day that Gospel Coalition is just a byword. It's just a complete insult. It's, it's coming. It's almost here, I think. I can't wait for that day because these people are destroying real lives. It's not hypothetical and it's not just, you know, it's, we're just having this ideological battle up here and it's just all up there and there's not really effect down here. No, no, no. These people are destroying people's lives and reputations and they don't care one iota what the scripture says to do they know what they need to do to in, in to 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 hold on to their power to keep that semblance of authority that they've built around them you know they man if they were in the old days they'd be wearing those hats and everything like this is the reality this is what's going on i hope you found this video helpful god bless